Hi, my name is Catrice Thomas, and I'm doing my leadership analysis paper on Lean On Me. Uh, Lean On Me is a movie starring Morgan Freeman. He plays Principal Joe Clark, and he's asked to come in uh, after 20 years, actually, and clean up a school that is in total disarray. Now, one of the reasons why I chose this movie is because Joe Clark's leadership style in this movie is clear. There's no question about it. He is an authoritative leadership leader. He displays an uh, autocratic leadership style. He uh, makes all the decisions. He is in total control. Um, and very little input from the, from the faculty is wanted or even solicited. Um, autocratic leaders typically make decisions based on their own ideas and judgments. And they very rarely accept the advice from the followers, which is what you'll see um, play out in this movie. Um, little to no input from the faculty. And again, he is in total control of what's going on. Now, consider what's going on with Eastside High. Eastside High is in total disarray, and as he would say, they're in a state of emergency. So they actually benefited from this leadership style. They needed someone that was gonna come in, clean it up, regardless of what anyone felt, um, that was gonna make decisions, hard, fast decisions, and you know, do what was best for, in the end, the school, as well as the students, and achieve the, achieve the results that he was set forth um, to achieve. Um, the benefits to this particular leadership style, like I said, is, you know, someone that's able to make decisions quickly, they take risk. Um, and usually this is good for, for uh, emergency type situations. So in this first scene, you're going to see 1967 Eastside High, Joe Clark is an in as a teacher, and you can see the level of passion that he has for education. So, you know, him coming back 20 years later was not just um, to be in control, necessarily, but it's because he actually does or did have a true, true passion um, for education and for educating students. So take a look at this first scene, and then you'll see we're going to fast forward 20 years later. Eastside High is in total disarray, and Joe Clark is definitely needed at this time. You'll see initially in scene one, um, it just kind of shows you how passionate Joe was about education and teaching the children. And then, you know, we fast forward 20 years later when he is asked to now come back to the school that he once taught at to now be a principal, clean up the school, get the, uh, the test scores up and, you know, really change things around. Just take a look at this scene here. It really says a lot. It sets the stage for the whole movie. Of your arrival. Uh, uh, Ms. Levias, your other vice principal and I have appointed an executive committee to oversee certain areas where we have noted a need for improvement. Uh, Mr. Sorella, for example... You may sit down, Mr. O'Malley. You think you can run this school? If you could, then I wouldn't be here, would I? Take note of his communication style, which includes body language and voice tone. No one talks in my meetings. No one! You take out your pencils and write. He gives clear direction. I want the names of every hoodlum, drug dealer, and miscreant who's done nothing but take this place apart on my desk by noon today. He wastes no time reassigning roles and responsibilities. Reverend Slappy. Yes, sir. You are now the chief custodian, Reverend Slappy. You will scour this building clean. Graffiti goes up, is off the next day. Is that clear? Yes, sir, the very next day. Mr. Zarella. Yes, sir. Mr. Zarella, you are now my new head football coach. Mr. Darnell. Stand up, Mr. Darnell. Mr. Darnell will be your assistant. You know why you're being demoted, Mr. Darnell? Because I'm sick and tired of our football team getting pushed all over the field. Thank you. Sit down. Despite any meaningful participation or buy-in by the subordinates, you can just tell that Joe Clark is clearly in control of all activities in this school. You've tried it your way for years, and your students can't even get past a minimum basic skills test. That means they can hardly read! So the state will not take us over to perform the task which you have failed to do, to educate our children! Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. There's only one boss in this place, and that's me. One of his first orders of business is to clean up the school, get rid of all the drug dealers, drug users, and really focus on students that are there to learn.
Now, the way he goes about it might be a little unorthodox, but at the end of the day, he does reach and achieve the goal. Well, times are about to change. You will not be bothered in Joe Clark's school. Yeah. These people are incorrigible. And since none of them could graduate anyway, you are all expurgated. You are dismissed. You are out of here forever. I wish you well. What are you doing? What's up here? Now, let me tell you something. The problem with teenagers is you think you're smarter than people who've already been down the road you're traveling. You know what I'm trying to say to you, boy? Do you? Yes, sir. I don't think you've changed a thing. Go on, jump. No, I don't want to jump. Yes, you do. You smoke crack, don't you? You smoke crack, don't you? Don't you smoke crack? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. You know what that does to you? Huh? No, sir. It kills your brain cells, son. It kills your brain cells. Now, when you're destroying your brain cells, you're doing the same thing as killing yourself. You're just doing it slower. Now, I say, if you want to kill yourself, don't fuck around with it. Go on and do it expeditiously. Now, go on and jump. Jump. No, I don't want to kill myself, sir. That scene that you just saw was probably one of the most memorable scenes from the entire movie. Joe Clark was authentic towards his students. He cared for each of them individually, and they were aware of that, and it starts to show itself towards the end of the movie. The scene that you're about to see just solidifies, again, how authentic he, he was and how much he really did care for the students. He wasn't as harsh with his female student as he was with the male student in the previous scene. Come on now. I've known you more than half your life. What's the matter? I don't have no place to live. Well, where's your mother? She don't want me no more. Uh, here, come with me. Come on. Let's see what I can do about this. Come on. It's been a long time, Mrs. Carter. Miss, I just came here to tell you something. I don't think I'm cut out for this, you know, school and all. I just came to say goodbye. Again, another example of how his interaction with the students is a little different from that of the staff. He's definitely more soft and caring. Dropping out on me, huh? I'm not dropping out. I'm moving on. I got You'll be I dead want. in a year, son. You hear what I'm saying? You'll be dead in a year. Joe Clark was the leader that Eastside Hyde actually needed. I mean, he fired teachers, he expelled masses of students, and he went so far as to lock the children within the school with chains despite the fire codes. He ended up getting arrested, but at the end, the students really rallied in support of him. What happened? What'd you do? I chained the doors. Now you break the law, you pay the price. <laughs> At first, Joe Clark was not accepted by the students or the faculty due to his radical views of change. But, you know, as people began to realize um, that they all wanted to reach the same goal as Clark, they rallied behind them. 